Hey, today we're going to talk about writing an abstract. So abstracts are probably the easiest part of the paper to write if you write them last. Even though we see abstracts at the beginning of a paper, we always write them last after the rest of the paper is written. And you will understand that a lot better after we talk about what goes in an abstract. The whole point of an abstract is to represent your whole paper to kind of sum it up in a relatively brief paragraph. And the reason we do this is because this may be the only thing someone reads in regards to your paper. A lot of times when you're doing a literature search, uh, you see a paper that you think looks good based on the title. You will click on that paper and you'll see the abstract and you'll read the abstract. The abstract is what will help you decide whether you want to actually go through then and read the entire paper or not. And so it's very important to have your abstract represent your entire paper. Now, I want you to think of an abstract as a mini paper. So it is your paper shrunk down to a one paragraph size. What does that mean? Well, a scientific paper has four basic sections, right? You have your introduction, you have your methods, you have your results section, and you have your discussion section. Your abstract should have the same. And so what you're going to do is you're going to write your abstract by taking a sentence or two or three from each of those sections of your paper. Now, when I say take from, I don't mean like copy and paste. I mean, you're going to rephrase parts of your paper and put them in the abstract. So start off with the introduction. It's rare that anyone puts more than two sentences of introductory material. And so if you think back to what goes in an introduction section, remember there's three parts. First, why is the topic of your study important? Second, what do we know about the topic of your study? And third, how is your study different? Um, usually what goes in the abstract is the first part of your introduction. Basically, why is your study important? Next, you're going to have a methods mini section, right? And depending on your study, you're going to have one to three sentences. So if you are doing a lot of different measurements and using a lot of different methods to look at something, then you might need three sentences. If you are just doing a couple of things, then maybe one sentence would be okay. Results, two or three sentences. I may have seen some that go up to four or five. Okay, so um, obviously this is gonna vary, but essentially what you wanna do is you wanna sum up what you saw in your results. And then you're going to look at the discussion section. Again, one to three sentences. Um, what did you learn uh, from your results? So that's essentially what an abstract is. You can see that you are basically just talking about one paragraph. Like if you count up, we have anywhere from uh, five to 11 sentences. Um, it's going to be relatively short. And so let's, let's look at a few papers. We're going to be using the two papers I've been using a lot in my series on writing a scientific paper. That's the Roe 2012 paper and the Lynch 2015 paper. We're going to use two more, uh, one of which is my latest paper, my 2020 paper. So um, let's take a look at those. All right, here's the Roe paper. So here's the abstract. In this particular journal, they call it a summary, but it's still basically an abstract. And you can see that the first sentence here is really talking about the subject of the paper. That's our introduction sentence. This paper was about iron uptake in trichodesmium colonies. And so you look at the first sentence, trichodesmium colonies contain an abundant microbial consortium that is likely to play a role in nutrient cycling within the colony. Although they don't specifically call out iron, 
they talk about how the bacteria play into nutrient cycle. The next sentence is a method sentence. This study used laboratory cultures of trichodesmium and two genome sequence strains of bacteria typical of trichodesmium associated microbes to develop an understanding of the cycling of iron. So this is what they're doing. They're looking at these colonies. We found that, says the third sentence. Well, what does that mean? This is a results thing. We found that. In contrast, the representative bacterial strains we studied were able to, okay, so here's the, another thing that they found. Uh, next sentence, from the organism specific uptake data collected in the study, a theoretical trichodesmium colony was designed to model whole colony iron uptake. This was from the discussion section. Um, the bacteria accounted for, so now they're talking more about their model, discussion section. Our findings suggest that, discussion section. Here's the abstract from the Lynch paper. The identification and characterization of aqueous minerals, blah, 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 are a high priority for determining the pathogen. This is why it's important, right? Introduction. Terrestrial analog studies are useful, both for understanding this is general introduction. In this study, sediments from the Pilot Valley Basin were characterized that means that stuff was analyzed, measured, that's methods. The spectra and subsequent interpretations were compared to mineralogical characterization. Yeah, they talk about methods, including X-ray diffraction, SEM, etc. In general, there is good agreement between these things. Okay, so here we have results. Detection is more difficult Okay, so here, the, even the, the results thing is kind of discussion-y um, in that we're comparing results. Um, v and IR spectra are dominated by absorption bands. Okay, so that sounds kind of results-ish. So this, in this one, the results of discussion are a little more mixed up. This study provides insights into the limitations. That's definitely discussion. So you're always closing with a discussion section. All right, next one. This one is from a geobiology paper, 2013, Krebsky et al. And it is morphology of biogenic iron oxides. And I chose this one because this is a really pretty long abstract. And so you can see sort of the range of what's there. Um, despite the abundance of Fe and its significance, there are no established robust biosignatures. This limits our ability a promising candidate to establish the soft morphology. I would say all four of those are introduction type things. Towards this end, we studied an extant model organism. Okay, we studied something. That sounds like um, methods. We grew cultures in flat glass microslide chambers. We use solid state voltammetric microelectrodes. Methods. So now they've got four of introduction, they've got three of methods. In low oxygen zones, the bacteria converge as cells oxidize, the stalks orient directionally. These are all things that they observed. So here we have results. And you can go on and you can see there's this thing where there, it could be results or it could be discussion where they're talking about filament composition and observations show that these can be preserved. Um, I, I, have not gone into detail in this paper yet, so I'm not quite sure where all those fit. But then this study demonstrates the potential of something we can do in the future, right? What is that? That's discussion. Now for the last one, which is my paper, heterotrophic bacteria. Bacteria have been implicated as both a source and sink of hydrogen peroxide. What is this? This is introduction. Why is hydrogen peroxide important? In this study, simultaneous hydrogen peroxide production and decay by 12 species were evaluated in both batch and flow through incubations. Okay, that tells how they were evaluated. That is methods. While species to species variability of cell normalized hydrogen peroxide decay rate coefficients was observed, these rate coefficients were relatively consistent. Okay, so this is results, production rates, 
results. You'll notice that in some cases I am giving specific ranges of things that were observed. And this is not uncommon for people to actually put numerical data in the abstract. Okay, um, variations based on incubation conditions suggest that. Suggest, anytime you see the word suggest, that tells you that we are talking about discussion material. We're talking about an analysis of what the results mean. Comparison suggests, yeah, discussion. Rates measured indicate that bacteria could account. Okay, so now we're talking about modest contributions. We're talking about modeling stuff. That is discussion. So we've got one sentence introduction, one sentence methods, um, two sentences of results, three sentences of discussion. So remember, an abstract is basically a mini paper. It's got important information from the introduction, from the methods, from the results, and from the discussion. All four sections are represented. And essentially, you want people to take away the important parts of your paper, even if they don't read the paper. That's what an abstract is about.